Okay. Hi. So I'm Erica. I'm from Houston. My favorite medium is mixed media. I prefer if people refer to me as a mixed media artist. I'm a creative, visionary, all that. I like 3D art. My favorite is going to be laser engraving, laser um, cutting. I also like to work on a canvas, but not necessarily painting. And I enjoy just making things with my hands. Always have. If you were on death row and you had the choice of a last meal, you get the choice of a main entree, you get the choice of a dry snack, wet snack, and then any drink. What's your last meal looking like? So I would definitely go with my dad's blue cheese steak. It is one of a kind family recipe like, it's just really good. It's like um, in a cast iron skillet, but he puts the cast iron skillet on the grill outside, cooks it in like butter, like oh, it's delicious. The blue cheese right on the sides, a little crispy on the ends. And then it has to be really, really juicy, like cook it in the fat. I want all the fat as well. And I want roti, because you can't eat roti dry. So that's my dry snack. And then um, the like wet snack on the side, like some really bomb, like slap your mom, like macaroni and cheese, loaded. It's gonna be my last meal, it needs to be loaded. And um, ginger beer, ginger beer, yeah, tink. God. I love food. <laughs> I can I'm, a tell. I'm a foodie. <laughs> On the weekends when I was in elementary, we'd always go to my country house and it's like family land over there. And I'd be with my great aunt. We'd always be doing like arts and crafts and stuff. And I never thought of it as like, oh my god, I can't wait to go to the country so we can do arts and crafts. But like, definitely instilled in me a love for the arts. I'd be painting, drawing, just like putting buttons on plant pots and stuff, just always do-it-yourself type activities. My grandfather, um, he has a really inquisitive mind. He like invents things, and, like has patents. So like, you know, my curiosity stems from that. I also have an aunt that's really creative and I go over to their house and like, they wouldn't be watching TV, like they'd be like into the arts. <laughs> like reading or something like watching educational videos and like there'd be arts and crafts everywhere and she'd be painting and listening to like some really funky jazz music so there's always been hints of it within my family if i have a vision like i'm trying to see through to it so that it looks like how i want it to look like i want the things of my dreams to be like materialized <laughs> because everyone's experiences are different and that's what shapes your point of view on life and all that good stuff so even someone with a similar upbringing as me or similar experiences as me they'll never be able to tell it through my lens and that's what makes it unique so more women of color getting recognized for the awesome work that they do I, a lot of my peers that are into art, I wish they had more of a platform to show their work because it's like a gold mine that hasn't been tapped into yet. Like just a pool of innovation that's there, way beyond two dimensional work. The thing is though, just like in theater, actual like cinema these days and television shows, I've seen like people of color getting their own like platforms. But the story doesn't necessarily have to be a people of color struggle story. Um, not, all, not all of our art is about like the struggle or about people of color, etc. But it has us in it as a way of like representation, which is all you need. There's a lot going on in the brains of people that that look just like me, and some that even don't. That I feel like should be on a higher a higher pedestal in the art world. The young minds, that too. There's this fashion show that I used to watch a long time ago. It's like the big one, like whatever it is. And they went to the fa this fabric store in New York. They had like so many fabrics like lining the walls. And it was just like shows like that, like when they're like, they have all the resources around them just so they can win a competition. Like I wish life was like that. Like 
everyone had the resources that they could so that everyone could be winning. So if I could create like an all-inclusive space that had everything you needed to just be your creative best, that would be awesome. I'm thinking of like a really cool like library, but like mm. with everything for like, like creating. A, yeah, it would be really cool. Uh, like an Ikea, but yeah. for art. Yeah. Yes, because you create yourself. Yes. Yeah, that'd be pretty dope. When you're creating, it sounds like it requires you to be vulnerable. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. I'm new to that. <laughs> <laughs> Does it ever get hard? Um, I feel like with my latest piece that's on display, I'm a gallery of the common experience. The makes me happy piece. That was pretty vulnerable. It's like silly and kooky because it says like, oh, crackheads on YouTube. That makes me laugh and smile. Like, yeah, but it's just like, that's a little vulnerable for me. And it's just like, oh, okay, interesting. The whole world can see that I have a list that makes me happy, which means I'm sad sometimes. So like, ah. <laughs> it is the most vulnerable and I got the most feedback for that. And like, I was surprised that other people liked it as much as they did because I thought it was kind of like, uh -huh. I thought it was kind of like I, but like other people liked it. So I was like, this makes me feel good. Maybe I should be more vulnerable and see where that, you know, takes my pieces, takes my artwork. Is this your profession? Um, like Tiana Taylor, what do I do? I do, I do everything. So. <laughs> There's more to it. I'm a brand. <laughs> Is there anything that we as an audience can do to support you in getting to where you want to go and helping with your art? I would just say spread the word. Like always put your friends on. Like always put your people on. It's lonely at the top, I've heard. And so just um, if you find an opportunity or if you see an opportunity that's there, like inform me about it or inform someone of what I do, I would say. Uh, go ahead and plug your social media so we know where to follow you. Plug, so at Erica is bomb. I have two K's, don't ask me why my parents did that. But um, <laughs> but like every Eric wants to name their daughter Erica. My mom was like, ha, tricks on you. And she put two K's <laughs> in there. So E-R-I-K-K-A-I-S-B-O-M-B. -K -K -I and then also Erica in color. That's my art Instagram. And then my photography one. <laughs> is iPhoneography with three Y's because that's all they had left for me. So, my truth is just a curious person and my curiosity fuels everything that I do. Like, I want to know everything. Like, I'm always reading, I'm always listening, I'm always observing, I'm always trying to, you know, trying to be on the up and up about things and I just feel like that's what makes Erica Erica. And if you miss the point, that's on you. Period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah.